Well, the APEC meetings will also focus on diplomatic, economic, and trade relations between the U.S. and China. For more on that, I'm joined by my colleague, Biz Asia America's Philippian. So, Phil, why is this meeting so important? Why is the relationship between China and U.S. so important? Well, you heard from Nathan. Obviously, there's a lot of political implications as well, but you can't talk about politics without talking about the economy. The U.S. does tremendous trade with China and vice versa. I mean, talk to Walmart, talk to any big-name company. They'll tell you that China is a part of their overall corporate strategy, and if it's not, shareholders are going to punish you. Therefore, these meetings are important because it helps bridge that gap between companies on both sides. For China, it's important because think about it. During the financial crisis, the rest of the world got hammered. It was a disaster. China actually did fairly well during the financial crisis. We won't get into the details of it. The bottom line is they're very proud of that fact. For the U.S., it's different. We had to bring rates down to zero. We did a lot of things. Our economy also has come back here as well. And the president has his hands full in trying to not only talk about the good economy in the U.S., but also strengthen that trade relationship that's very, very important with China. They need each other. So what do you think as far as the U.S. goes? What is President Obama's biggest priority? What does he hope to accomplish in this APEC meeting? If you asked me this two weeks ago, I might have a different answer for you. With the Republicans now in control mm -hmm. of the Congress, it makes it much more complicated for the president. The relationship between the U.S. extends far beyond just trading, of course. We've got cybersecurity, we've got military, we've got politics. This particular issue of the economy is very difficult for the president because he has to also address all the ancillary issues as well. But remember, we have two competing trade deals in place, right? The Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is the U.S.-driven deal. Then you have another one from China as well, and it's going to be impossible to have these discussions without actually talking about the conflict that those might present. And what about President Xi Jinping? As far as the Chinese go, what do they need to see to consider the APEC meeting successful? It might be controversial. I'm going to say it anyways. It's already a success. The be fact that they're meeting. The fact that they're meeting, it's already a success. You have these leaders from around the world that are there in Beijing. By the way, um, for our viewers, it's the second time since 2001. So it's the second time in 13 years they've actually met again in Beijing. It's already successful because they're at the table. But think about in 2001 to 2014 how different China is now, right? It's a major player on the global stage. They can dictate the terms of oil deals. You just talked about the Russia deal. That's huge. That would be unfathomable back in 2001. And now they have the leverage to do these deals and then talk about it. So what China is saying is that, look, we've come this far. We've already been successful. We just want more of it. OK, and let's be honest. There are also some sensitive, more controversial things on the table. Do you think there will be real progress when we're talking about cybersecurity, um, human rights? I mean, things that the US has been concerned about. Well, the good news is the E in this meeting, which is called the economic part of it. So they're going to minimize the controversial aspects of it and focus more on the trade and economic development. But I think the strategy on both sides is that as long as they're talking, as long as there's this dialogue about trade or any other thing that you want to talk about, that's a good thing that they're talking because there's plenty of countries in the world that don't talk to each other and you have much, much bigger problems. So when you talk about human rights, you talk about cybersecurity, this is still a very important part of it. Well said, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Philippian.